welcome back to Swans Cast, then everyone, where Swans confirmed their playoff place. Uh, Lee, you thought it wasn't going to happen. Well, how are you feeling yeah. now? Uh, just relief. I think that was the main thing. Succeed. I think that was it. The pressure was getting to everyone, really, wasn't it? The last couple of uh, last couple of weeks. But uh, well, even when they were one 0 up, I was like, "Oh my God, it's happening! We're just gonna fall away." But uh, no, in all fairness, relief now. Two weeks of stress-free football until we get into the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I feel like maybe it'd be interesting to see how they play now with these last two games without that pressure. Obviously, the pressure comes back then straight away when you uh, play the first match against whoever it will be. Um, I mean, you got. I say there's nothing to play for now, but there is. There's a. There's the team that you're going to play against, and there's whether you're going to play the first game home or away, isn't it? That's kind of what's left to play for. Um, if you finish sixth, sixth, you play home first, and you? So you play the. If you play, if you finish third yeah. or fourth, you play away first. So you get the home leg decider. So. Um, as it stands, we'd be starting away at Bournemouth, which I think, yeah, the the aim has got to be for the last two games to try and finish third, isn't it? Just try I just think he needs to just try and like uh, get confidence. That's what I would yeah. say. Um, I mean, getting, winning brings confidence, I guess. So, if by winning games you end up finishing third, but obviously, if Bournemouth and Brentford both win their games. Brentford's still got a game in hand, so. If they win that game, then we're probably not going to finish third. Um, but at least fourth, maybe. Yeah. Well, that's that's. that's but but then that's, that's the, the thing. Game. I think Barnsley. Well, we're all on seventy-seven points. That's Bournemouth and Barnsley. So, I would. Ch- I if I could choose, I would pick Barnsley because I think as well their form is the worst. They've definitely dropped off. And actually, yeah. I'm like, well, I'm being harsh. No, I'm being harsh. They've had four wins in five, so it's a bit weird to say they've dropped off. But I know for a fact, um, I was listening to Talk Sport when they were playing against the, over their last game. I think it was against Rotherham, wasn't it? Yeah, and they won 1 yeah. 0. Um, they said they didn't deserve to win. That Rotherham should have been 2 2 1 up at minimum, uh, which is probably why Ro- Rotherham are in trouble and Barnsley are not in trouble. But I think since they got into the playoffs, like they had that outstanding run. Where they won like game after game after game, and I think they they did enough to get there, secure their position, and I definitely think they're not. They're still good, but they're not on that level that they were when they were winning week in week out. But like I said, I mean they've still won four out of five games. You can only beat what's in front of you. Yeah, I think out out of the three, you would obviously pick Barnsley, but you know it's just it's a lottery, isn't it? They they've obviously deserved to finish in the playoffs, like. Yeah. Yes. So there's there's no easy game in there. But, we look uh, at the mental side of things as well, and we've beaten them twice this season already. If you think back to last season yeah. when we had Brentford, we lost to Brentford twice last season, didn't we? Yeah. I think um, I was going to say oh, I watched um, I watched Brentford and Bournemouth as well. It was the early kickoff on Saturday, so I was having a little watch of that, and yeah, I wasn't that impressed with either of them to be honest. It wasn't a great game. Whether they both just sort of winding down, like ready for the playoffs, but. Well, um, yeah, talking it wasn't a great about game. form, Brentford form has been like it's been bad, but credit to them, even though they've had bad form, they've still been not losing the games. They've been picking up points. So let's have a look. Since their last defeat, which was against Norwich, and that was on the third of March, they have drawn for six games. So if you take the six points off them, say they didn't manage to draw those games. You know that changes their their outlook completely, and and Reading still would have a chance. So um, the fact that they managed to not lose the game is vital, isn't it? Like if you did the same for us, and we'd still be third. Those all those one nil losses that we've had recently. Yeah, I think um, it's been a bit of a weird season though, because normally I know like Bournemouth obviously had the the best sort of uh, run recently. But um, everybody's like dropped off. Like nobody was grabbing it, do they? The Watford would. They did grab it. Like until they made a gap, didn't they? And then it was up to everyone else to close it. But they, yeah, they had that run. But then I mean, like I, I'm, I'm sort of looking at the last sort of like six weeks or last six games, especially. Um, just like no, nobody's standing out. Nobody's like, oh, you know, they're playing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like Watford board, left the gate open for someone to sneak in if they if they could. No one could take advantage of them. But then, at the end of the day, they're going to finish the season very well. 
They're on 88 points. They got hard two games. They got to play Brentford and us. They could well finish the season above 90 in second place. So, um, <laughs> yeah, like, considering how everyone spoke about Watford's season, it's been a bit up and down and, you know, there was a period where you thought maybe they'd miss out of the playoffs. It's getting 90 points. Like, they've that's, they've smashed the second half of the season. Yeah, I know, but that's that, that's what's weird. I think everybody sort of jumped on the fact that we were so up and down and we've had, like, bad performances recently, but I think it's across the board. Cooper made a point about it as well earlier. He said, like, it's been such a hard season for every team. The way, you know, with the short turnaround after last season and and, and the games, you know, the the volume of games that came so quick. I think it's just been a hard season for everyone and it's just... It's just been a strange one, like Swans dropped in form and then Brentford dropped in form. And then even the chasing pack outside the playoffs, the door was left open for them as well. And they all fell away, like um, Middlesbrough, Cardiff. The door was well open for them to yeah. have like a playoff run and they all just like blew it. Cardiff fell off a cliff so, yeah, after they beat strange. us, which is weird because I thought that would have yeah. given them something to kick on. But they like it's weird thinking after they beat us, everyone was like, oh, they could even like finish above us. And now you look at the gap, and it's like what thirteen points. But apparently, we've been awful since that came. Yeah, I know, I know. So, like, it's, it's yeah, shows, yeah, it's isn't it? Like, season. we still did our job at the end of the day. As much as it's not pretty to watch, and sometimes today, I don't think today's was that bad. And we'll discuss today's game in a minute. Um, what frustrates me, actually, I say this now, going into today's game, you're allowed to go one nil down in a game. You are allowed to go 1-0 down in a game, right? We were playing well before the first goal, but as soon as that first goal goes in and Reading go 1-0, everyone, the Swans are awful, we're rubbish, we're just crap. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it doesn't matter what has happened before that goal, everyone is jumping on it. It's like, why? Football is a two-team game. You're not entitled to go ahead and win any game. Sometimes... The other team score from something, some uh, defensive mistake, whatever, which it was in this case, I would say. Um, but that's 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 the beauty of football. At the end of the day, you're like you don't really want. Maybe if you're a fan of the team, you want to be dominating every single game, oh. don't you? But like, as a fan of football, you don't really want any team dominating all the time. You want that unpredictability, and that's why the championship is such a. Well, people say it's the best league, don't it? I know, like, that's an arguable comment, but. People who are like, you know, not necessarily like tourist football fans, if you like, always credit the championship of being like the most, like the hardest league to get out of nearly, I think is a term that's used quite a lot for the championship. But it's because of the unpredictability of the league, and that's what makes it exciting. As hard as it is as a fan to like not win some of these games, that's what makes it exciting to watch, and that's what keeps you going to the end of the season, that's what keeps you interested and. That's why everyone's still like watching and engaged in in the playoff fight, and it's it's a little bit of a shame, not from a Swansea fan perspective, but a bit of a shame that the playoffs are done with two games left, and second place is done with two games left. Yeah, I was going to say it's 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 strange for the championship because the playoffs are done. Well, it's just Norwich need a win to win the title. The the two promotion spots are gone, so there's only the like really the last sort of relegation place. Um, and it's it's done. The last two it's go quiet in the championship, and it's usually not like that. No, but, um, no, you're usually right. I think something like, can happen on the last day, can it? Something can always happen on the last day in the championship. It's always brilliant, but this year it's going to be maybe just a big relegation game. But, you're uh, saying two relegation places are done. Technically, none of them are done. We know yeah, two out of four teams are going down, but we don't know which mm-hmm. ones. Yeah, Wickham are gone. Though, Basically, one difference. team out of four teams can save themselves. Uh, had us feel safe now and they so Arby, I tell you what they've been lucky because rather I'm at the play all their games in hand so close together right it's like squeezing them in now at the end of the season yeah um, I hope we don't do them a favour uh, next week I, yeah I, I'd like I'd just, be, I'd just like to see Derby go down I think it'd be, because they, they they literally haven't won any games but they're only still out of the yeah, they relegation zone yeah, oh yeah they did they're not, it's yeah, not a good start that. to Rooney's managerial career is it that was a bad performance. That was. Why did we talk about that? Um, but yeah, you're right. I'm going back to what you said about going one 0 down. Um, yeah, I think like the start we made was good. We were looking bright, and I thought like you know, looked tidy. We looked more like the 
it looked more like either we were going to score. I know like we didn't really create loads of chances, but um, yeah, as soon as we went one 0 down, then it just changed everything. But I think it was just the yeah, just the situation we were in when we were one 0 down. You know, it was direct competition. They just needed half time then, They needed composure. I said to you, then I was watching the game. I managed to watch the first yeah. half. I was working again, but um, watched the first half. Didn't really see much of the second. So you can help out more with that. But um, look at another momentum graph on Sofa Score, which is what we always use for the stats and stuff. If anyone does want to check it out while we're talking about it, they've got a little momentum graph that kind of shows you the balance of the play, like the possession, the chances, all that sort of stuff, and then they tally it up every like minute, and they give you like a bar chart, basically up or down home team going up, away team going down, the higher the bar is, is basically the shift of momentum. That's the best way to explain it. Um, but even if, like the first half of the first half, that's the first quarter, it's mostly all of us. And then obviously they score, but still, like it's not all them after that. We have It's the most up and down graph I've seen in a while, where on the balance of the entire game, we've got more spells our side, although I would say it draws a fair result from what I saw. Um, but yeah, the first goal, we I would say looked the better team before. I think Kapango should have scored right at the start, second minute or something. Yeah, that was that was a big chance. Yeah, um, I just missed that. So if you can talk us through that one, didn't catch it too early for me. Yeah, um, the ball sort of come out to the left to low, and he's put a lovely ball in. In all fairness, to low, um, it's just gone to the back. It's it's a bit harsh because it's probably hard because he hasn't got much of an angle to sort of uh, head it back towards goal. But it was a bit of a chance. Goes just wide as air, um, side net or something. Yeah, he heads it into the side net, and so um, um, I've, I was basically queuing in boots for like ten minutes to get my meal deal because I had one tail person on. And, and <laughs> as, as is always the case when you want to watch something or you're in a rush, the the customer that's paying ahead of me uses one of them dodgy gift cards, and then oh. the tail up don't know how to process it, and then she's ringing for more people and there's no one else on the floor, so I have to just wait. <laughs> it's just like ages, which is fine. Like I understand. Obviously, I work in a similar environment, so. Not going to kick off or nothing, but I'm just there like, oh, I just want to watch the game. I want lunch. I was just, rushing on uh, Just please. Rushing on Friday as well. It's just typical. I was Friday. I went to uh, the bakery by me and I had a like nine o'clock meeting at work. And uh, the guy in front of me had obviously come from like a, like a building site or something. So I thought, oh, it's just the guy in front of me now. He goes in, he's like, can I have like nine coffees, three bacon baps? Yeah. Oh, you always get that in Greg's, don't you? You always see, like, you see one of them coming in and they buy in for everyone on site, like, and then you just say, like, oh, for God's sake, like when we used to have a fifteen-minute break in uh, in work back in the day, go to Greg's if it's oh, a queue, yeah. you're like, shit. <laughs> could, could you risk it? Could you risk it in the fifteen minutes to get across? Yeah. Um. Anyways, back back to the game. <laughs> Redden then scored goal, which, in terms of the full play. I haven't got too much to criticise other than the ball comes in. You could argue someone needs to close that down more. Um, I need to really watch it and evaluate it to like see who maybe should have been the player in that space. But where the big problem for me is like Bidwell's positioning was awful. I think that ball's coming in. He's the furthest forward playing him onside anyway. Can he just run forward and play him offside? Surely that one hard. I think he misses the trick there because the other defenders seem to come out um, in line and he just gets stuck back with the... Uh, yeah, but then he's not really paying attention to this run either. Gets caught behind him and he just can't recover. Uh, I just thought it was poor. He doesn't... He, yeah, it was, but because he doesn't even challenge for the ball. He's just just there, isn't he? And the, I don't think the he's ever over him from where he's going. Make an attempt to I think, yeah, it was, it was poor. A really poor <laughs> defending both, like you said, stepping yeah. out and trying to defend the, the crops was always awful so as much as we don't want to just shit the love of Jake Bidwell um, my point was like we went 1-0 down because of something that he probably should have done better there um, you know it happens whatever get over it we move on but for everyone to then jump on now we've conceded again like we've gone 1-0 down again like we're awful just one player just made an error that that's, that's, doesn't mean the team's been awful like all of a sudden I honestly don't think we were awful before that you're going away at red in if the last two results weren't as negative as they were, nobody, nobody's not going to draw away a red in. We probably would have already confirmed a playoff place. Yeah, we would have already confirmed a playoff place, and potentially still in the end for second. So, like, if you know, if if we win against Wickham and QPR, that is, which you'd argue we should, 
Um, this game, though, their direct competition, currently, today, they were. They might not have been, obviously, had those results gone in. But a draw away at Reading, like, they've been in the playoffs all year. You would take it. Yeah, but don't forget, that, that game there for Reading was their season on the line. They had yeah. to win or their season was over. It was, so that's you know, even so more credit, than they've got more to play for in, our, in, in reality because... Yeah, we but we're both fighting for playoffs, but is our spot to lose at that point? And we've got two more chances where all we needed is another three points, and they're out. And they have three chances where they need nine points essentially. And credit to us to come back into the game and yeah. fairness at that point. So context um, is key. Yeah. And I think you could see that a little bit. I think what you were going to say then afterwards, it looked like maybe the Swans were rattled a little bit with the pressure. Are they? Maybe were a bit like doubt was creeping in, and they were making some bad decisions. I think on the ball, Horahan was one that nearly <laughs> should have been two 0 down. Just that, played, that, I didn't even know where he's playing the ball. That was game there, like that mistake there. He should do better with the chance. Um, in all fairness to Wood, when he makes the save, but he should do better there. Who was it? Was at least he? he scores quite a few. So yeah, that that chance there, that, that would have been game over. Two 0 down, there's game over. Yeah, it was uh, not great. Um, Horahan instantly, as soon as he played it, like, a head in his hands, like, I mean, you should be running back, mate. But, yeah, like, oh, crap, what have I done? Sort of a reaction. But I don't really know who he was trying to pass it to. It wasn't really a back pass to the keeper. But then it was nowhere near the defenders. So I, I, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, did, did you find, though, that it was a bit of a kick clash on the screen? Because that was awful for me. Yeah, it wasn't great. I think in person it's probably not too bad. Yeah, I know, yeah. I'm not saying But on the screen, yeah. it's not good. He's probably just looked up split second, seen someone there, thinking it's the defender. And passed it we back were away, uh, a third kit. We did uh, I don't know what it means. It's, it's blue and white in it, red in. So that's probably why we weren't wearing home, because of the white. But then... Our away is light blue. So you still argue, arguably blue, you know what I mean? There's still a clash there. So maybe purple, it is purple, isn't it, this year? Yeah, it's like a burgundy sort of colour. That, that would, I'd, yeah, right, it doesn't really matter. But I, thought, I just thought it looked a bit dodgy to me on the screen in my eyes and not good at the best of times. So. Yeah, oh, yeah I, think, I think that would have been better if they bought the third kit, but whatever. Um, yeah, so that's the goal. Um, Horhan Can... had an error. I think Cabango slid in a bit dodgily in the box at one point. I think he did get the ball, but it was like yeah, it looked a bit ropey in terms of like he could have made a mistake there. Yeah, he could have. I think um, Cab- I thought Cabango played well today. Yeah, he did. I, mean, he I just I'm not criticizing. It was good tackle in the end. But oh, I yeah, just, I know, from yeah. where he went in, I was like, did you need to slide together? Because it looked heavy from very close, and um, it was like. Oh, I don't know if that was yeah. a good call, but I was glad that he came with the ball. I think he like stunned the ball, didn't he, at the player's feet, and the player goes over. But you never know. It's just you're risking the ref blowing that whistle. I think um, I'm more, more annoyed with that Horahan pass, though. He's been so bad in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Like, more than the other midfielders. It's just, yeah, he's been awful. I'm not going to go into the stats again, but we've, we've done it enough times. Just Yeah, I don't know. Just he hasn't done anything for me since that first little run he had where he was. was well, we saw his impact. We saw his impact. Is further up the pitch, isn't it? So like, he don't work in that three. That's the bottom line. It's not his position. The system doesn't work for him. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I just he's not necessarily a bad player. He showed that at Villa, but um, just doesn't work in the system. He's got to he's got to do more for Steve Cooper's style of play and tactics. Than he offers in terms of like defensive other systems, he might not have to do that stuff, and then he can show what he can do. But uh, yeah, it's just it's hard to knock the player because you know it's just not his game. Yeah, I know it's not his game, but like no, you knock it. But I just mean like you got to ask a question then, like who brought him in? Really, it's not been a bad yeah, sign in at all. But like, yeah, I know, but I mean, you know professional footballer if someone says like you know you've got to play in this system and you've got to you know you've got to you've got to do whatever job you've been asked to do in that midfield and he doesn't do it yeah but it's like he when he's playing centre midfield though isn't it I have to go back to the stats I think he's made like one tackle in four the last four games you mean, let me check today's just, it's just not good enough like even not, all right, maybe it doesn't suit him going forward he one just doesn't put today, the graph clearance that's it 
just doesn't put the graft in. Doesn't put the graft in in that midfield. Yeah, it's uh, like he's, he had a decent park and pass and accuracy today. Forty passes, eighty seven percent. It's not too bad. Uh, okay. But yeah, the defensive side against poor. One clearance and one tackle. Got dribbled past once. Um, about them. I just said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. One blocked shot. He didn't make a clearance. Interception one. Tackles five, though. That's that's massive. Um, Grimes a little bit quieter than he has been, but still. One clearance, one blocked shot, one interception, one tackle. So still twice as much as Horahan. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Just flat three for me don't work. We've said it for ages. Horahan in it don't work. Just push him as a cam. When you're defending as a cam as well, you can make a little bit more, like, you don't have yeah. to have as much of an impact. Something like, I noticed as well, we think we're begging for a, we said, like a cam going forward just to have a midfielder as an option because I think that's why sometimes <clears throat> our play is really slow sometimes. Like, if we're not, like, sort of counter-attacking or anything, but we're trying got, to build yeah. it. Because there's no option in between the midfield and... Uh, yeah. And up front. Um, so this is the reason I think these the defenders end up playing long quite often as well. So, yeah, Cabango especially. Um, but you can't. It's one of them where you can criticize him because you're like, oh, don't play long so much. But at the same time, can you criticize him because if he feels there's no other option and he's just getting rid to not lose the ball in defense, like he's arguably also not doing the wrong thing. There's, there's think, loads of times where someone's tried playing it out and we're like, oh, just get rid of it. Well, he does just get rid of it. So, or, or not play the risky pass that gets intercepted and then they straight back down and score. Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. when he hasn't got that extra option, so it's like you've got, like, Callan potentially and low on the line trying to, like, break a run. And then you've got, like, Grimes and Falton trying to, and, and Horahan probably in different positions, dropping a little bit deeper to pick it up. But then there's no one it's sort of in between. I can under, I can maybe understand why he does it because we've obviously dropped a defender now, haven't we? With the way we play, so maybe he doesn't want to drop a midfielder forward as well to lose even more. Yeah, I understand it. So maybe anyway. in the back, maybe yeah, I know, maybe in the back. Yes, yeah, I'm saying maybe in the back five, he should have been playing a cam at least with two holding, and, three and in the back with the wing backs, and then one in the, one in the centre. But you can see it when you try and press as well because the front three press as soon as they break that. Yeah, there's not the another midfield. person. There's just nothing there. Yeah. Three at the midfield then, and it's just, you know, they're, they're 20 yards up the pitch. They break that front three press, and they're, they're straight line off. Already, so, then, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, could, you could say this happened, it's been happening for a longer time as well, because Selena phased out oh, under Cooper. That's his position. That's why he wasn't playing. And that's why he never got back into the team. And ultimately, it must be the reason he probably went, because... Yeah, okay, Cooper gave him the option to fight and stay for his place, but when you look back at the season, you wouldn't have got in the team because you don't play that position. He maybe would have come off the bench to make an impact when Cooper decides we're losing or play off the left, potentially, or he would have been asked to play like up front, which I don't know if that would have worked. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think he, was, he, he clearly... It's not something that he's looking at using at the moment. Whether that's just the state of the game. I think, I think there's been it, talk no. about that attacking midfielder position being like it's quieter than it was maybe five, ten years ago. And and that's like you could link this to the likes of like Urzil and his struggles. People just saying like that role is like not as prominent as it was ten years ago. But football goes in phases, got, doesn't like... it? Yeah, but you've got, if you look at the top of the game now, you've got like hybrid midfielders, like people like De Bruyne and Foden. I was watching today. Gundo and even. But clearly, like the attack minded midfielders, they play anywhere. Like they don't they don't play it behind the striker, do they? No. Um, you know, sometimes like De Bruyne will be like a false nine or Foden will be. And like Bernardo Silva as well, they sort of. Nobody plays They're in just attacking position. players now, aren't they? They're just attacking players. Yeah, but they do what needs to be done defensively as well, all of them. Obviously, this is a different level of the game, isn't it, with players like that? But I mean, Yeah, but it, is, it is. But if you're going to go into the Premier League, which we have a chance of doing now, then you'll be up against that. So hmm. I'm not saying that you should be doing that in a championship, but that's the level you've got to try to rise to in the Premier. You're not going to rise to Man City standards, of course, but... 
in terms of getting 11 men defending, and that's something that you would, you would say is one of the basics, wouldn't you? So There's no reason why 11 men can't defend. There's a reason why you haven't got Kevin De Bruyne in your midfield, <laughs> like attacking. You should be able to have a Kevin De Bruyne defensively, because you know it's not his it's not his strong point. But if he can put a shift in still, that's all you're asking, isn't it? So going back to Horahan, like could be why he couldn't get in the Villa team. Really, that, that literally could be the yeah. reason, especially at that level. And um, yeah, maybe I wonder if people are. Would you be happy? I, I don't think I would mind if we didn't keep him in the summer because obviously his contract is up and it was obviously, we were like, oh, we'll sign him on a free, it'll be a good sign-in. Looking back now, I'm like, would his wages be better somewhere else? Because yeah, George be, Byers uh, can come back in and do the same job as far as I'm concerned. Oh, he played well yesterday as well. He did a lovely assist for Portsmouth School that I saw on Twitter. He's back here yeah. on the corner and someone scored. But no, I think I don't want to be too harsh because... Hopefully, we see a bit of form from him now. If he goes into the playoffs and plays well, you know, scores a goal or something. Yeah, if he scores a goal, a sense is up, then forget everything I've ever said about him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the way he has been playing since he had that good spell when he first came in, since then, he's offered nothing for me. So, yeah, I'd be devastated if we didn't sign him next year, but give him a chance in the playoffs. And, I'd know, love to get uh, Gibbs White back on loan. Keep, yeah, oh, oh my god, yeah, it's I not would like love he's that. getting a look in a Wolves, is it? So yeah, Wolves lost 4 0 to Burnley today at all. And I, I, he did play. I don't know if he started, but he did play. I saw he was on when I flicked down earlier. Yeah, they were 3 0 down at half time. That's awful result, that is. Um, Imagine we could sign him, though. Imagine we could sign Gibbs White. That'd be that'd quality. Be, that's unbelievable signing. Uh, keep seeing, Go on. I, was say, I keep seeing people saying they'd love to have Gallagher back. He didn't do anything for me. I, I don't, don't know, know why I would have him back. Oh, no, he didn't do enough for me. I, I don't know, I'm, sec- oh. like second half of the season, he linked well with Brewster, like that, just the form. Maybe he didn't do anything like that stood out. He had a couple of assists. He had a good couple of assists, actually. And, oh, actually, there we go. There we go. Here's one. He played where Horahan played and managed to get the balance of pushing forward when we needed him to yeah. and dropping back and defending, which he'd done well. He'd done both well. So maybe he was a little bit more, like, he didn't set fireworks or, like, scoring goals and stuff. But he got assists, and he got back and defended, which is what we're trying to say. Orahan should be doing. Yeah, I think. Oh, I think in the system that he plays, I think Gallagher suits it better than uh, than Horahan does because he does, like you said, he does a bit of both. But I mean, in terms of like, I seem to think that Gallagher was absolutely class, and I just I don't know. I think if we had him there this year rather than yeah. Orahan, maybe another, maybe another season he would have shown what he could do. Yeah, maybe being a bit harsh, but I mean, yeah. I know everyone credits Brewster for the second half of the season, but I think Gallagher was a big part of that because he's often the one that was bringing the ball forward to him. Yeah, so I, know. I thought he lost quite a lot of ball in midfield. Yeah, we'll come back anyway. Maybe, but then so does Andre Ayew. So I don't, not really. Yeah, well, he, he does sometimes, doesn't he? Like he goes on to it too long and stuff. Yeah, but I mean, he's higher up the pitch, isn't he? Like it's just different yeah. position, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll revisit that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, second half of this game. Um, walk me through then. I didn't see the start of it. I saw, uh, I saw our first goal live. Second half. Um, started bright again, similar to the first half. I think we looked quite good. We were on the ball. Um, still not creating too many chances, but we were passing it around a bit better. Um, Cullen had a good chance with a header. Uh, low, put a, low put a ball in and Cullen had a... Like a sharp header, which just went wide. Speaking of Cullen, um, did he have a good game? I thought I was really impressed with Cullen. I thought he was really good. Just having Pest up front, like a proper proper nine up there. Um, he was running the, the channel as well. As the, the, battle he had, the battle he had with that holes um, was class, because I thought maybe he was a bit lightweight, you know. Maybe that's something he needed to improve. But, but he was using that lightweightness well. to win free kicks, wasn't he? Yeah, he was he was brilliant. I thought um, you actually made me realise because I was when he took him off, I was gutted because I thought bring Ayu on with Cullen in the middle and lower wide, I think would be class. But yeah. you said to me before we started, he is coming back from injury. Yeah. So fair enough, he took him off after sixty minutes. It made sense, but the fact that I was gutted that he was coming off um, says it all. I thought he played. I thought he was class. Yeah, so I and think for that me, Cullen think... coming off on sixty was pre-arranged because. I was surprised he started coming back from injuries on his third match since coming back. Um, so, 
I mean, he hasn't done like a full second half or nothing. So like 60 minutes is a lot, considering he hasn't started the game since January. So I think I don't think he would have wanted to do that. And I think the fact that he also then was risking Andre Ayew coming back from injury. The two things, I think, like he, he's taking Cullen off because so, he doesn't want him to get injured for the playoffs and um, and risking Ayew as well. So I think he was definitely like probably didn't want to do it. What we said about like tweaking a formation and he may find something that just works. I think that could be it. I might like Cullen in the middle with Ayu on the right of him and low, that could be dangerous from what I saw today. They can maybe work it in for the next two games. I mean, like, don't give Cullen 90 minutes and Ayu 90 minutes, but you know, maybe just have a time where those front three are playing together for 20 minutes or just to get a bit of a combination going because I think that could work really well. Yeah, I think he's running the channel as well when I saw him first half. Um <laughs> It was one where he got past our homes and our homes basically ankle tapped him. Uh, and then there was another one which I thought was harsh because he was in, in the box, got past his man. I just thought he was using his like body to like 50 50 for the ball. And then the red in defender, who is bigger, just goes down too easy for me. And I, yeah, I that, think that's he's in. The ref yeah, goes I agree. I remember that one. That was not a foul for me. I do not think Cullen did anything wrong. He just tried to run around him. There's a little bit of argy bargy from both of them, and he gets through. And the other guy's on the floor. The other guy should never be on the floor. I know. Similar, I think, to like that Andre Ayew the other day, where he shoulder badged and defender falls over and he he, he passes and scores. Yeah, uh, Sheffield um, Wednesday game. Yeah, but yeah, Cullen, good game. Um, so first goal then, Jamallo scored again, keeps uh. I say keeps the run going. He didn't score against QPR, but sort of keeps the run going. I use uh, I use instant impact. Oh, can we just take a moment to appreciate that reverse nutmeg? Because that was like that just shows his quality, doesn't it? That was instant impact as well, coming off the bench. That was almost his first touch. It might have been his first touch. So you say he was like holding three players off, but to through his le- someone's leg by back healing it. Um, Took three players out of the game there. And felt that had space to run into. Uh, I think he just got it for a shot, didn't he? And then um, the keeper makes a good save, but he can't hold it, and it's just parried, and Lowe's got to tap in. That's a, that's a point we made in another video, though, with it, when we were begging for them to push him out on the wing, saying to attract defenders away. Yeah. He took three defenders out of the game Look, there. we've already discussed this. Cooper watches us. He takes his tactical advice Let's from watch. us. Andre Ayo on yeah. the wing. Drag the defenders out wide. He's also got the winger there. Three of them marking him. Not Megs and Fulton's got eight to run into him. We score. So, just saying. We'll have uh, we'll have the assist for that one. Like Steve. Watch the podcast. Be like Steve. Um, second goal then. I believe when they're like a one-two up on the wing. I can't remember who it was. It was Bidwell, the second uh, person. Lovely play. Bidwell and Bidwell and Low sort of interchange. Um they were one two. Bidwell goes through credit to Bidwell. I know he made the mistake for the goal, but yeah, um, for it. his composure there, rather than just smashing it across, he takes that extra sort of second, pick his pass, um, puts it at eyes. He, he did he did do well there. Yeah, I did. I saw the I saw it afterwards, and I was like, oh, he has passed that. Like he's passed that at him quite hard. But Andre you did control it, and he took a second to put it in as well because there was a defender on the line, but he just smashed it in in the gap and. Yeah, it went in, so that's all that matters. But if anyone hasn't seen it, go watch the highlights. Um, I watched it on Sky, and and this is a direct, direct response to anyone that's tweeted today saying that the team doesn't show passion, there's no desire, anything like that. Andre Ayew's <laughs> reaction to that goal, you can literally hear him screaming a bit while like, showing how appreciative he is of the ball, crediting his hard work, like... You can hear him screaming at him, like and celebrating. So it shows how much it does mean to them. There is no lack of passion. Losing games isn't a lack of passion. Like it's a long season. You can't finish in the playoffs if you've got no passion for it. Um, Agree. Yeah, that's a throwaway comment, though, isn't it? Every time, every time the Swans are playing, not no, they're not playing well. It's oh, they don't want to know, yeah. and oh, they're not showing enough passion, and they don't care, and that's just an easy throwaway comment. If you want to criticise them, criticise them in a critical way and actually point out stuff that needs to be looked at. And it doesn't mean you need to like hate on people or like be ultra negative about it. You can give constructive criticism or like, you know, analytical criticism. But saying there's a lack of passion, that's just not the case. Like, 
what player does not want to get a promotion where they're also going to get a pay rise? Everyone talks about footballers playing for money. Well, they get more money if they go up. So why would you not want to do it? Plus, you play less games next season. Like, it's just ridiculous. Just um, yeah. In all I've got nothing else to say on the performance. You just, it's like you said, a throwaway comment. You're just saying it's, uh, it's the easy way out, isn't it? Because you don't know what the issue is yourself or you can't analyse the football match in a way that you can add something constructive to the conversation and have an actual discussion about it. Instead, you'll just say there's no passion. But um, yeah, that's my two pence on it. I'm sure <laughs> that will get clipped out and uh, spread everywhere, but it does matter. Yeah, I don't know. I think, yeah. You said we were playing well and it was always great and then we were one nil down and we were shit and the world was over again and yeah. we were getting relegated and then uh are you come on but then but then even even in like positivity it's someone finds a negative yeah so like oh are you come on and obviously change the game oh yeah but you know we'd be we'd be relegated without are you and or oh, cooper would be nothing without are you like, so where would where would brentford be without Tony? you know exactly. where would norwich be without like said, even, like how far do you want to go with positivity. it? Oh, put, put it this way: when we first came down, I know we had to get wages off the books, but he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't here. With Cooper, he clearly wants to be here because he scores goals and he runs to him. Yeah. And he said in all of his interviews how much he did they play for him. But credit Cooper in the fact that he's you know, bought into what Cooper's presenting to the team. Yeah. He wants to be there. If Cooper was shit and he didn't have a clue and he was rubbish, he would have gone. Yeah, because he's an experienced player. He's Ghana captain. Why would he still be looking around Championship Club if the manager was clueless? Also, exactly. another, another, another point that, adds, that he could go and get money. Yeah, another point that adds to this is the fact that we don't know where he's going to be next year. But th- what I mean by that is, he could have signed a contract with any foreign club in January, up to now. Any point from January to now, to the start of next season, he can sign a contract with a foreign club. He hasn't done that yet. If he was not happy or wanted to leave, he would have probably done that by now. He probably already has had offers. I think the point is, he's waiting to see if we go up, because if we go up, he'll probably try and work something out to stay here. My suggestion is what will happen is he'll be offered like yearly deals. Um, Whether we keep him on the same wages, I would imagine he probably would just match it or be a little bit lower if we go up, and he probably would accept uh, but it would be yearly on the basis that if we do go straight back down, then we don't have to have his wages in the championship, and it's like kind of like a good ending all round. But the fact that he hasn't gone and signed for another club when he's free to do so right now, I think again just backs up the fact that he clearly wants to be here and, and work with Cooper, and um yeah. and the whole like take him out of the team, we wouldn't be where we are. You could probably list nearly every team in the championship go bigger. Where would Barcelona be without Messi? They they had yeah. an awful year. Messi's kind of dragged them out of it in in La Liga. So and I mean like you know we have got him like, you know Cooper has got player, him so and he's it. used him well and he's been class. Yeah. What was he supposed to do? Like oh, I won't use him because people will say I'm only yeah. good if I use him. I, in the, I can't put I you in the team because otherwise I'm not a good manager because um, I've got to do it with not the best players in the club. <laughs> Just what are you trying to say in there? Like what what are you trying and, to say? Uh, and he, you know, as I said, credit to Cooper because I think he is just a massive. Well, he probably is one of the main reasons why I was still here. Okay, I've got one then that shuts this up a little bit. How many goals has okay. Andre Ayew scored this season? Fifteen, is it fourteen, maybe? But like no, for, look, obviously, if we take him out of the team, no, no, to, no. Listen to what I'm going to say, right? Andre Ayew, sixteen goals. Jamal Lowe, fourteen goals. Andre Ayew, five penalties. So, he's not, like, Jamal has got 14 goals from open play. So if you take away penalty goals, which is another thing people like to do when they're looking at certain things, he wouldn't be our top goal scorer. So, like, it's not like we haven't scored goals without him. Yeah, I know. I think we said before, though, like, the attention that he drags away and the, and the work rate on the pitch. Yeah, it like, is, we would... it is. We would be. We wouldn't look. No doubt, we wouldn't be where we are if we didn't have him this season. But you can't. You can't use that as a criticism against Cooper. And uh, it would look, Cooper's not good because he's only. Well, he's only yeah. good because he's got Ayu. Well, we only got into the playoffs last year because he signed Brewster. Yeah, oh yeah. But he signed but like, Brewster. You know, he signed him for that reason. 
It's only good because he had Bruce there. He literally brought him in to score goals for us to get us further up the league. That's literally why you sign a player. Anyway, um, obviously we went 2-1 up, as we've just discussed. Bro- Cooper, I did mention, but Cooper, you said about Ayu's oh, oh, first touch at that. Um, triple substitution today. On Andre Ayu won for Cullen. Mentioned, you know, people were frustrated on Twitter as well that Cullen went off, but it's, it's very obviously because of him coming back from injury. It's his third game since coming back. He's only made two substitute appearances in the second half. He started a game for the first time since January. Clearly, he needed to come off for fitness reasons because we want to keep yeah. him fresh for the playoffs. Um, i got to be honest, I'll hold my hand up on that one because when he did come off, I was like, why on earth is he taking him off? But then you're, when you're I, when I thought league. about it then, I was like, yeah. Just he, as bad. No, I know. <laughs> this is why we don't do videos straight after the game. Like I said, critical analysis. Not uh, not you now, but like not uh, just... Yeah, I know. Bandwagon it. Like that makes sense because he's come back from injury. Yeah, yeah same as Routledge. Like, we know Routledge isn't as fit as he was because he's like 35, 36. So Whitaker comes on for him 64th minute and he probably would have called him going off around that time as well. And Robertson for Norton. Um, looking at the stats before we look at Redden's last goal. Bit of an equal game to draw being fair. 51 to 49 possession in Redden's favour, but 14 shots to 15 in our favour. Both had four on target. In terms of big chances, though, this might be telling. Redden made no big chances. I think both their goals were like, well, the first one, I'd argue the first one, maybe because Bidwell is keeping up with him, they're not saying big chance because he could have gone away. Um, Swansea, big chances, three. Big chances missed one. So I. Do you know three big which? chances. Would they be registering? Maybe the, maybe the Cullen, the Cullen header, maybe. Oh, the Cullen. But yeah, and we hit the post. Yeah, low with the, oh, low with the post yeah, at the end. Well, that, that might yeah. be what it was then. Yeah. Was that after two all? Uh, we were two one up at the time. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. What a minute three one. So yeah, a bit of an equal game, really. So um. Yeah, yeah if that goes in, we're three one up. Looks like a great result. Eh? Yeah, and looking at the big chances thing, obviously Redding got a second goal. And this was definitely not a big chance because um, they're just playing it around the box a little bit. There's a cut back that comes like to the outside of the box and the player hits it. Uh, I can't say the guy's name, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Estevez? Yeah. Estevez? Well, so, yeah, something like that. But he, he just hits it. It was a good shot. Coop, uh, not Cooper. Woodman is like unsighted by like five players. He does dive, probably a bit late, but you probably can't see anything. Because he curls it in. It's a, it's a good finish. I think it's a good goal. Uh, I don't think we can have any complaints from... The only thing is, there's one... It's felt done it is, that charges down one of the... The, the player that passes it out to Oluku, who then um, gets the assist. I think it's Olise. Olise is running through the middle, and felt goes to charge him down, but on the wrong foot to where he's clearly playing the ball, and gets nowhere near him. So maybe he could do a bit better there to stand him up, but... um. Maybe I'm just being a bit harsh there as well because I don't know if it ultimately would have changed anything. Yeah, and again, though, like that that last like you know injury time three minutes. He's probably knackered as well. Yeah, and also, like we said, it's it's red in season on the line. They got yeah. three minutes to save the season, so they're probably looking forward. Yeah. yeah, we've done the job. We only needed a draw, and we got a draw, so we've done the job. It literally doesn't matter that we didn't get a win. It does not matter because we weren't getting automatics at this point. Only fight everyone I was a better opposition in the playoffs, but. You've got to beat whoever it is anyway, and then whoever wins the other games in the final, and they're probably better one of the ones you didn't want in the first place. So you just got to be the best in the, in the knockout tournament at the end of the day. Two, so. um, two playoffs in a, uh, two years in a row. Yeah, well, can't argue that. that. I think Cooper deserves credit. He's had a lot of stick, but you've got to give him credit because he would have taken playoffs at the start of the year. Um, and it's an improvement of last year because we're not sneaking in on the last day. So it is an improvement, even if we finish sixth. Um, yeah, I could I could be wrong as well. I think like in his post match interview, I've never really did him. I might be wrong because I've not listened to all his press press conferences. In all fairness, but his post match interview, he sort of touched on the fact like he, he was like, we haven't got the strength and depth of the other the top four teams in the league, and he said we haven't spent, we haven't had the money available to spend what they've spent. Yeah, he said true. that. So he said he said it's got to be credit to. Uh, for the players, he said, hard season, we yeah. haven't had the, resor- you know, the resources and like the other team. So, uh... Indeed. Yeah. Like I said, we can 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything. <laughs> it worked. Anyway, like I said, wow. <laughs> we can <laughs> ignore that, guys. <laughs> Nothing happened, okay? Criticizing <laughs> where criticisms do sometimes is deserved, and you can point out some of the stuff that deserves to be pointed out, such as his use of subs throughout the season on several games. Um, today he wasn't so bad, but other ones, yeah, point it out, criticise it, that's fine. But also, give credit where credit is due. And the bottom line is, in a 40, was a 48 game season, 46 game season, 46, he's finished in the top six and in with a chance of going up. Doesn't matter, literally doesn't matter how you play or anything uh, for the rest of the year, it doesn't matter what has happened for the rest of the year, if you win that playoffs, it literally doesn't matter. That's all that matters. Yeah, look, I uh, I got to be brutally honest. I don't see us winning the playoffs, but can you imagine he wins the playoffs? I didn't see Fulham winning it last year either, though. Not true. Just for him, just for Cooper, just for him to win the playoffs. It'd be it's, massive, wouldn't it? I just, I'd love it for him. And it's massive it. for the club as well. It's 200 million this year. Yeah, I know. That, like, because we ain't going to go spend it all, which, good. Do an Norwich, happily do an Norwich. Um, Buy a couple of players in to get the depth up and then hope for the best, I guess, and see what happens. But um, just consolidate the club. Like maybe you get the academy back up and run into the same standard. Maybe you like, you know, you rebuild yeah. some of the stuff we have to for let sure. go. But then when we go back down, we're not in a position where we have to let it go. Stuff like that. That would just be important, I think. Yeah. No, he's got on. Anyway. Great show to you know, get the academy and build back in. That'd be great. Yeah. Anything else from today? No, nothing much really. Like I said, I I know. Look, it was a great point again. We, I I don't see us winning the playoffs with the way that we we have been playing. I think looked like a tired team to me. I think like he got he got a tune out of them for you know maybe three quarters of the season. But uh, no criticism on him. I think we have just looked tired now. Um, and I think they said it in the punditry as well. They said like you know. Swansea haven't got the strength and depth to change the squad massively, like you know Norwich and Watford have got, and you know Bournemouth and Brentford to a certain extent. Yeah. But, uh, I I just think we look a bit tired to me. But maybe well, maybe now two weeks got two weeks to rest these players. Yeah, maybe you rest them. I would, maybe he just maybe I'm he's sorry. happy with sixth now, and he just yeah. Changes. Do you? Yeah, well, this is the question to have. Do you now? Play your playoff team and build for two games, or do you just rest everybody and um, just give people? I think game what I would do is I would maybe try and win against Derby at home because we haven't won at home for a while. I think, I think that's it's important. Maybe if we can get a home win to just knock that out of your head a little bit, because yeah. it's been like a couple. I, we I, said in the last bit, it's been a few games, and then I think maybe the Watford game. Just, just rotate the squad. Maybe we play like Whitaker starts and like um, Smith comes Ollie in because he hasn't been started. I, I want to see Cooper him play. Run out. Yeah, uh, Latabodia comes in. Yeah, definitely. Stuff like that. Definitely. I think not. Like we haven't got. We can't change the full squad. But um, Jan Danda maybe. But just and then wherever ones don't start and then whoever does start maybe you sub the regulars off for the other regulars that sort of thing. Just well, I, I think. I'd be tempted to maybe like finish, finish the two games with the team he wants to play in the playoffs. Yeah. And um, but then again, you can't really do that because you're you're not going to know. Or if you get we... injuries as well, then. Yeah, but that's just it. We've got to limit the injuries. Like, I'd be tempted to not play IU for two games, but he needs to be fresh. So maybe just maybe bring you him just on keep him on the bench minutes. and give him like twenty minutes, three minutes, second half again. I think a two-week rest for some players would just be massive. Going into the playoffs, well, he looked like he'd rested after this injury, didn't he? A little bit, I guess. Yeah. So maybe just like same thing, put him on a bench and bring him on last half hour, and yeah. uh, see what happens yeah. with that. But like it's what you said, about the strength, in, yeah, what you said about the strength in depth, I think it says it all when you've got a thirty-six-year-old playing on your right wing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, again, that, that's credit where credit due there. Um, okay, uh, it's been a decent match to talk about obviously happy that we're going into the playoffs cannot be unhappy with that i believe well, we'll cause... be i'm sure we'll be doing like uh we'll probably do some sort of pre-playoff video or something we'll get something like that sorted um 
I think we might have something in the works with someone like the Bournemouth channel we were on before. They invited us to come on, so maybe there'll be something with that. I want to hear more about that as well. And then at the end of that, we'll see how the playoffs goes and we'll do like an end of season review where we can maybe pull up some of the information about Cooper and his finances and what he's had to spend and go into a bit of detail there. And then we'll just see what happens for the summer, I guess, after that. So, yeah. Anything else then? Obviously, we uh, touched on that. I just said great, uh, great, great performance of the season to have the playoffs wrapped up with two games to spare. Can't argue with that. Yeah, I saw uh, someone on my Facebook earlier saying how we scraped into the playoffs finally. I was <laughs> just like, can you say a scraped in when there's still two le- games left to play? Don't think that's scraped in. Scraped that in was last was year. The ver- yeah, the very definition of scraped in yeah. was last season. Like, how can you say someone scraped into the playoffs when there's an eight point gap or whatever it is? Eight point gap, yeah. It's not really scraped in. Eight uh, point gap. Yeah. I mean, he's a Liverpool fan and they're trying to scrape top four, so. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. Anyway, cheers for coming to the video, as always. Don't forget, guys, to um, check out our social medias. Um, we got some merch on Teespring if you want to check that out. Get your own J Felton Top Ins t shirt. We'll have some more of that coming soon. Probably get one of what was it? Be like Steve. <laughs> Be like Steve. Yeah. And um we're on Spotify as well, so check out Spotify. Being a bit slow with some of the match videos that we've uploaded there, but we always get our podcasts out on Spotify. Um just type in Swans Cast and you should find us there as well. So cheers for coming on, Lee. No worries. And see you in the next video. We've got a week now to do the Derby one, so I'm get- we will get that out and then uh, yeah, see you next week. Soon. Thank you for watching. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video to click the like button to help us grow. To keep up to date with all of our new uploads, hit the subscribe button and push the bell to ensure you are notified of all of our new videos. As always, engage in the comments and let us know your opinions on what we discussed today. And if you want to support us directly, check out our new merch where you can find some awesome sponsor-related t-shirts.